So guys, we are living in the age where us humans will now become the testing facility for technology. Yes, the news has finally come and Elon Musk will be installing chips in our brains. The idea is both fascinating and horrifying. What is Neuralink up to? Let's find out. For all those of you thinking I'm joking, Neuralink has made the big news about the first human trial for their groundbreaking brain implant device. Not only that, they have also announced who will be the first people to use Neuralink. In this set of revelation that told everyone that are looking for people to be the first test subjects for their N1 brain computer interface device, an R1 surgical robot procedure. If you are wondering what this N1 chip is all about, the N1 chip acts as an interface between the brain's neural signals and external devices. It is designed to detect and record brain activity and transmit this information wirelessly. It is also equipped with wireless capabilities, allowing it to transmit the processed neural data to external devices through a Bluetooth connection. The neural data transmitted by the N1 chip can be decoded and interpreted by external devices, enabling individuals to control computers, keyboards, or other devices using their thoughts. The company said that an outside institutional review board gave them full permission to start choosing their first human patients for a clinical trial. This trial is now known as the PRIME study, which stands for Precise Robotically Inserted Brain Computer Interface. The fully implantable wireless brain computer interface from Neuralink will be tested in this investigational medical device trial. The first human trial could take up to six years to finish and confirm the results. The main part of the study will happen in the first 18 months. I don't know what to call these masochistic people who would opt for this trial, but let's call them medicinal subjects or patients. These patients will meet with a medical team every two months after the device has been inserted to check on their progress and make sure the Neuralink device keeps working as it should at least twice a week for 18 months. Each patient will have an hour-long BCI research session with the Neuralink team through the main study. The long-term follow-up phase of the trial starts right after the primary study and will continue with four clinical visits a year for the next five years. The primary study's goal is to find out if the M1 implant and R1 surgical robot are safe. It will also let the experts decide how well the Neuralink technology works so that people who are paralyzed can control external devices with their thoughts. In the proceedings, for the first time, Neuralink's R1 robot will be used on a human patient. I just cannot imagine myself on the surgery bed in this case. The R1 is a sewing machine-like device that implants very fine, flexible threads into the motor cortex of the brain. This is the part of the brain that controls how you want to move. You know what indicated that nothing can replace a human surgeon? The fact that even this cutting-edge technology needs a human surgeon to cut a flap of the skin off of each patient's skull. The surgeon will then use a cutting tool to remove a circular section of the skull, just big enough to fit the knurling device. The surgeon may or may not also remove the dura, which is the layer of soft tissue that separates the brain from the skull. The study group will probably have 10 people at most. Neuralink has previously stated that their early procedure versions face challenges in penetrating the dura layer, necessitating its removal. So, they have been working on updates to allow the threads of the Neuralink device to penetrate through the layer while keeping the protective dura in place. At this stage, an advanced targeting computer will guide the placement of 64 electrode threads directly into the brain's outer layer, penetrating only a few millimeters. The precision of this procedure will prevent any rupture of the blood vessels within the brain tissue. Once the threads are inserted, the N1 device is positioned inside the skull of void and the skin flap is replaced and sewn shut. This innovative surgical approach ensures that the N1 implant remains cosmetically invisible under the patient's skin, while enabling wireless transmission and recording of brain signals through the Bluetooth connection to Neuralink's smartphone app. This app can decode movements and tensions from the cortex into computer input commands. The initial objective of the PRIME study is to provide people with the ability to control a computer cursor and keyboard using their thoughts alone. Neuralink's founder, Elon Musk, was quick to promote this trial on his Twitter, which is now ridiculously known as X. Elon stated that the first human patient will soon receive a Neuralink device, which holds the potential to restore full body movement. Musk also envisions Neuralink as a device bridging the gap between the human brain and artificial general intelligence in the long term. He believes this technology can enhance human-to-AI and a human-to-human -human bandwidth, reducing risks related to AI and civilization. Musk's vision involves eliminating the input lag between human thought and computer action, especially in a future with highly intelligent computers that can process vast amounts of information rapidly. The prospect of a direct and instantaneous high bandwidth connection between the human mind and AI is crucial in Musk's view, as traditional input methods like typing or speaking would fall short in keeping pace with such advanced AI. 
AI. He concluded his thoughts by highlighting the practical application of this technology, referencing Stephen Hawking and how removing communication limitations could have further amplified Hawking's impact on the world given his remarkable contributions to theoretical physics and cosmology despite communication challenges. Whenever Elon Musk takes up on X, you better know that he has a lot to discuss. He expanded on his earlier discussion by proposing that a Neuralink implant could integrate with Tesla's humanoid robotic technology, such as the Optimus robot they're developing. He cited the example of Luke Skywalker from the end of The Empire Strikes Back, where Luke receives a robotic hand mirroring the one severed by Darth Vader. A Musk Neuralink technology could allow individuals to surpass the limitations of human condition and biological frailties. In their announcement, Neuralink expressed interest in recruiting trial participants, specifically targeting individuals with quadriplegia resulting from a cervical spinal cord injury or amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. These individuals often have minimal to no control over body movements from the neck down. Typically, they rely on specialized hardware like a head mouse or eye tracking systems, both of which have limitations and significant costs. Neuralink, while not capable of healing spinal cord injuries or reversing degenerative effects, still has the potential to provide a comprehensive solution to these communication challenges faced by these individuals. Trials with macaque monkeys have demonstrated the technology's ability to enhance communication and control, illustrating that if a monkey can use Neuralink to play Pong, it's plausible for a human to fully control a computer using the same technology. Elon Musk has always maintained a belief that Neuralink could one day reverse the effects of spinal cord injuries and even combat brain diseases like ALS, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, or Alzheimer's. The billionaire also acknowledged the speculative nature of these claims, considering that the root causes of many of these diseases remains largely unknown. So where does the future lie? I think that Neuralink might try to get into such speculative studies if their initial clinical trial proves successful. For individuals who believe they qualify for a Neuralink trial, there's a patient registry available. This registry caters to both current and prospective clinical trials, providing Neuralink valuable insights into the needs of a diverse group of individuals with various disabilities within the United States. Eligibility is open to anyone at least 18 years old, experiencing quadriplegia, paraplegia, vision or hearing loss, inability to speak, or major limb amputation. I know many of you must be speculating how harmful this kind of experimentation may be, but not to forget, Elon Musk's brain implant venture also recently concluded its most substantial funding round to date, securing $280 million in investment led by Peter Thiel's Founders Fund. With that much money to boost up the R&D, I think Neuralink must have acknowledged all the potential threats to the physical well-being of the subjects. Not only that, implanting chips in human brains, as envisioned by companies like Neuralink, raises profound ethical concerns that touch on various aspects of human life, privacy, autonomy, and societal implications. One thing I personally am very vocal about is the societal divide. If brain implants were to become a reality, there could be risk of creating a societal divide where only those who can afford such technologies have access to its potential benefits, leading to further inequalities in healthcare and opportunities. Having said that, with this last funding injection, Neuralink's total financial backing has surpassed the $500 million milestone, a significant portion of which has been provided by Teal's fund. Subscribe to Innovella for more blues from the world of AI and technology. Let me know in the comment section below if you wish to get a chip in your brain. I have made another video on Tesla's humanoid robots and how they have improved over the years. But can they be potentially integrated in this whole brain chipping scenario? Click on the video link popping up to find out.